Welcome to my thoughts on Scream Queens Season 1, Episode 2. This episode is called Scream Again, so spoilers for this episode and all the ones leading up to it. And, yeah, another episode I absolutely love. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, just in case you thought the magic was gone. Oh, you know, Season 1 is over, new setting. Yeah, they hit the ground running. Uh, you know, immediately we get several jokes about, oh, you know... This hospital, we're, it's Halloween, so, you know, we're not gonna, can it, can it wait? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a party, there's like music, everyone's in costume, it's kind of fun. Can your husband die later? Is that possible? Can we reschedule this? It just, you know, which, right, like, I don't know if it, it is a reference to one of my favorite jokes from one of my favorite comedies. The, the movie, I'm, I'm going to get the exact year, it's called The uh, Rules of Attraction, it is from 2002, <sighs> yeah, um, it features some characters going to a hospital asking for help, and there's a nurse there, and she clearly, like, she, she sees them, she hears them, and she's like, I'm on my break, and does not help them, and it's wonderful, and I love it, and I'm just so glad to see more like it. And, yeah, there's a there's a swamp right, right next to the hospital, and that's why the tuberculosis patients kept dying on them. We are now the fourth best hospital in an area of four hospitals, which really lowers people's expectations, you know, just, yeah. And... <laughs> the nurse talks about, oh, the, you know, I used to think there was a monster here, the green meanie. I love that, like, the swamp has this, like, neon green, like, it's the kind of swamp that you only see in movies. Like, I I mean, I'll grant, I've never seen a swamp with my own two eyes in real life. I've, I've only seen them in, like, documentaries and such. But I'm pretty sure they don't glow neon green like that. It's just, yeah. And, yeah, we get a nice slow-mo shot of the two doctors. I'll grant, I, I think this is the first thing I see Taylor Lautner in. I've heard a lot of bad things. I thought he was fine in this episode. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give him a chance. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have thought Ariana Grande would, you know, I, I like her, you know, she's, She's fine. I don't. I don't really approve of the, you know, her. I, f I forget what it's called, but I've I've seen some people point out that she kind of. She imitates black, you know, even though she herself is white, for for popularity, that's bad. But other than that, you know, she's she's fine. I don't really have an opinion on her, but I wouldn't have thought that she was a good actress. You know, the the, I mean. I know she's acted before. I'm not saying that it was the first time she acted, but like she acted on like Disney sitcoms. Like I don't think those have a particularly high, you know. I mean, usually you talk about, oh, you know, yeah, they started on Disney, but then they proved that they could actually act, you know. But I liked her a lot in season one, so I'm gonna give Taylor Lautner a chance as well. And <laughs> she, oh, right before I go any further, loved seeing Jerry O'Connell as Doctor Mike. And since it was a flashback, I mean, in the first one, we saw several, they, they went back to the flashback multiple times. I hope we see more of him. I, I'm, you know, I quite like him. He's very, very funny. And he's really great here. Just, yeah. But the, the yeah, you know, we meet the girl with werewolf syndrome. And <laughs> just, yeah. Once I was arrested by a dog catcher. <laughs> and the... Let's see... Yeah, we have the thing with, you know... Um, you're not really a doctor, you know, and, and she's like, oh, they, they gave me the the honor... The honor... No, not honor. Yeah, they, they gave me the doctorate that they, you know, took away from... I don't feel comfortable mentioning his name, but yeah, you... If you watch the episode, you know, you are going to make them sit, stay, and beg. That's probably not the best metaphor, Munch. And 
yeah, you know, we, we get this, you know, she's, now that, you know, she has a book, she has a TED Talk, she has all these, you know, what's next, asked Pope Francis. That was an unnecessary name drop, just like, yes, you know, I don't want to say that I've met, you know, every single important famous was, you know, I did meet Pope Francis, you know, just... You know, it's not, you know, of course she has to, you know, she can't just rest, because this is America, so, so she's gonna, you know, she's gonna try to do something, and, yeah, you know, reforming the, the healthcare system, that's genuinely a good cause, and we already know that Munch is not the most, you know, principled person, and, yeah, it's, she, I, I don't think she, she's the first, uh, you know, to, to like pretend to want to help out with the healthcare system, but actually just take advantage. And yeah, she's going to finance cure, C U R E, with her own. And, and what about the Chanel's? Yes, they were convicted of, uh, you know, a. You know, of being serial killers. However, because of a Netflix, you know, it was a true crime documentary, which, like, oh, wow, that's, yeah. Oh, boy, there are a lot of those. So, that's, yeah, there's a lot of people who've gotten, like, a second wind from being the subject of such. So, so yeah, very, very, and, and <laughs> we see that, you know, Denise Hemphill, really glad to see her back. I hope she's in more of this season. I guess I could understand if Hester isn't, but I hope, you know, it, it was great to see her again. But yeah, she has a confession on VHS, which is ridiculously old school. Do, do they even have... Who has a camera that, like, makes VHS still, like, in the year 2016? Just... <laughs> But, you know, she's she's so poor that she, like, shrink wraps, you know, expensive stuff. So, yeah, sure, she has a hand-me-down, like, I guess her grandfather's camera or something. Just, yeah. And, you know, she... I'm impressed that it wasn't Sadie. Although, knowing Denise, she probably went to Sadie first, got nothing... Zayde said, it's probably Hester. She went to Hester, and she was like, I know you did it. Well, they can't, you know, you can't do anything about it because there's double jeopardy. No, there isn't. You haven't been charged. No, but somebody has been charged. That makes it double jeopardy. It's single jeopardy. <laughs> and Hester, you know, always just, yeah, really, really funny. Let's see. And, yeah, so Munch approaches Zayde, and <laughs> she's smoking a joint, which I, she's really lowering her guard. Like, you, you know, we've seen her smoke joints before, but not usually in front of a now former student. <laughs> Let's see. But, but, yeah, you know, you can understand how she talks Zayde into joining and she says she has a, per you know, Munch says she has a personal reason for wanting Cure to succeed. And, yeah, I mean, we know for a fact that she's killed before. So, you know, there may, it might be something sinister. It might be something completely, you know, benign. But, the, yeah. Let's see. And... Uh, yeah, and Zayde meets the, the two doctors, and Cassidy just, like, immediately says, I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I know, it's it's a real letdown. I'm like Viagra for women. So, you know, just... <laughs> and we get a very clear indication that, like, you know, the... the you know, we, we hear about the hand transplant, and we get very clear indication that... Dr. Brock is very uncomfortable about people, like, you know, oh, that's not your real hand, and he smacks the, the metal. If someone buys a, a used car, would you say it belongs to them or the person 
they bought it from. You know, just and yeah, the and I love how he keeps mentioning that he went to Harvard. <laughs> Did I mention I went to Harvard? Harvard University. And you know, oh, uh, you know, I, I lost my hand in a Super Bowl accident. You played Super uh, Super Bowl party, <laughs> which is such a perfect because, like, I know very little about sports, but the one thing I do know is that like fans of sports are convinced that they are part of the game, like that they're cheering means that the team they support wins you know the and and so so yeah he he doesn't start by saying oh super bowl party he's like super bowl yeah yeah you know and and you know oh the the power went out and i started doing the dishes because i can't sleep in a you know i had surgery can't sleep in a house with 30 dishes didn't know that he had turned on the disposal you know the soap lubed up the the ring. it just i love how convoluted this is like it's not just this one there's so many steps to this accident you know and yeah his his hand got you know and there's blood spraying on john stamos's face and everything just yeah absolutely loved it and yeah that is now i've been known to watch a horror movie or two that is the backstory of a serial killer in a horror movie like holy shit just yeah, that that really, <laughs> and let's see, and and you know, I I I was the one who separated the, the Hemsworth brothers. They're not even twins. That's what made it so difficult. <laughs> Which is like, I mean, they don't even look that much like they don't. They couldn't really pass for twins. Like if you know, you know that they're brothers. They're, 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 they sound similar if you sound to their natural if you listen to their natural voice, you know. But other than that, like they don't look that much alike. So yeah. But yeah, I love how absurd of a statement that is. You know, I separated the the Hemsworths. They weren't twins. That's what made it difficult. And he again, you know, punches the the metal, which again, like, yeah, okay, this is this is a serial killer. I've watched horror movies. This is the, and we hear the the like, I forget what it's called in a hospital, but you know, voice, uh, just, you know, they're they're paging, paging Doctor Smegma to the urology department. So I'm glad they haven't like they're they're. Sense of humor hasn't matured significantly since the season one, I see. And let's see. Yeah, and we meet Chamberlain Jackson. And just oh my god. He he you know says, I have the solution. You know, and he hands her two you know, shave shaver yeah, just wow. And, uh, yeah, and they say, you know, give us one week, we'll have a solution. And, let's see, Zayde wants more, uh, you know, more women to, to work at the hospital. And Munch, I, I seriously appreciate it, because, like, in real life, you know, uh, hold on, her name isn't, oh, there, Jamie Lee Curtis is a feminist. You know, I, I really appreciate someone who can make fun of themselves. You know, she's like, oh, Feminism, it's so tiring because that is, you know, there are women who pretend to be feminists who are just taking advantage, you know, like, I hope that not very many people still believe that, like, Posey Parker and, you know, uh, J.K. Rowling are actually feminists, you know, they're, you know, Posey Parker is hostile to, to cis women as well. I'm not sure I've heard a lot of J.K. Rowling being hostile to cis women, but certainly her hatred, her, her transphobia, her hatred of trans women. Yeah, no, you're you're no longer a feminist. Like that's not. Yeah. Let's see. And yeah, so the Chanels have now been, you know, they they've been found not guilty. 
They've been released, but they have an image problem. And I, I love that when, you know, I'll never say no to, to Chanel number one delivering voiceover. Just, just love it. But, you know, she, she leaves a room and the doorway, you know, Chanel's number three and five, night neither of them will just let the other one get through the door first. They try to squeeze through at the same time. It just, uh, yeah. Let's see. You know, very much like follower kind of behavior. They're not, uh, you know, yeah. And I appreciate the point made that some... I, I don't know if it's... Is it true that a communications degree is worthless? But certainly some college degrees are absolutely worthless so and <laughs> Chanel number no. five works in a like children's what was it children's den dentist uh, place you know and you know it's and, and Chanel number no. one is pretty convinced it's so she can get free braces for her vaginal teeth and just she screams at children who are like, you know, it's like, I mean, some of them are probably, you know, some of them are happy. They're like sitting there playing with toys because they're about to go into, you know, a dentist, pretty scary for kids. Some adults are still scared of them. Maybe not, you know, if, if that's the case, try not to watch the movie, The Dentist, before going because that's not going to help matters. But yeah, you know, some of them are like excitable because they're they're sitting there playing with toys that they don't have at home. Some of them are probably, you know, they're they're like trying not to think about the the dentist thing, and she screams like, "Can you not see that I'm on the phone?" Just wow. And <laughs> and Chanel number three is mopping up after in in the. In, sperm uh, deposit facility uh, she was in heaven it just I really like props to Billy Lord for making that face when she goes and you know just imagine reading that on the page you know your character sees you know a lot of sperm on the walls and is really really happy well, okay I guess the floor whatever no, no yeah she wasn't she wasn't looking down she was looking at the entire room so anyway Let's see, and turns out Chanel number one loves blood. <laughs> like, it just, it's not just that she's like really, really cruel to people, but the things that she loves are all so screwed up, you know, it's just, wow. And, you know, big smile, I know, you know, but just, you know, turns out I love poking people. <laughs> and she's, you know, one little serial killer on one campus killing spree. It's just, you know. And I really love Zayday's reaction to seeing the Chanel's. And I love how, like, right after screaming at, you know, seeing them, he's like, oh, come, welcome, you know. Let's see... And, you know, and, and all of them hand off the, you know, the, the, I guess they're scrubs, you know, cl clothes that have been washed. And, <laughs> and the, the Chanel's go into the, you know, to the room and, and Chanel number one is like, I'm not going to wear disposable clothing, okay? You know, and Dr. Brock is showering right next to, and they're all, like, really, really attracted to him. Again, like, Billy Lord, very nice. I'm not going to imitate it, don't worry. But just, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Chanel number one, I see she managed to get her shirt off. You know, she manages to strip down to underwear in the few seconds. Although, I guess it's slow motion, so she has extra time. Just, yeah. He's got a harder tattoo on his shoulder, or, or the back of his shoulder, like he, like a prison tat or something. Just, and they discuss the various meanings of ghosting, which you know, I love how much it's like. Okay, I get it. Ghosting has multiple, you know, it, it has more than one meaning. 
the one I'm using it for is this. And then one of them is like, that's not really ghosting them. <laughs> Let's see. And yeah, so they meet um I'm I'm afraid I didn't pick up her the the character's name. Um but yeah, you know, the the girl with werewolf syndrome. And they are so unbelievably rude to her, just holy crap. And they you know, I love that not only does Zayde basically suggest a lobotomy, but she actually, she got like these Google images, like she, she got on a computer in the, in the building and got like a Google image of like a, a regular drill. Like that's obviously not what they're going to use for, for, in a hospital. And, and like, you know, Googled hole and there's a picture of a hole and, you know, it's, and I know it's in the building because it says cure at the bottom of the, the page. It's just like... <laughs> and... Let's see... And that, yeah, so they go, you know, the, the Chanel's go to the this, this, you know, other area of the hospital. And Chanel number five is like, ghosts! No, they're nurses. They're back. They're basically our slaves because we're doctors. And just, oh my god! And it's sadly like it's so true that like nurses, if if you deal with a nurse, please treat them well. They get so much crap from so many people. Like there's this truism that nurses do a lot of the work, and doctors get credit for what nurses do. And it's just yeah. Let's see. And we meet Hoffel, whose whose initials, you know, whose yeah, your name is basically I am Hoffel. <laughs> Let's see, and you know they get summoned by um, Zayde to Munch's office, and Munch is still acting like she's their dean, like like they're in college, you know. I'm I'm you know you have to stay in this in in the sleeping area and I expect 10,000 words uh, you know you, you have to you have to make up for for your screw up by doing an assignment this is just yeah let's see yeah and and you know she reveals you know that she's like no I'm not giving I'm not giving you a salary you're you getting you know free room and board and this will count towards the, the medical school, you know, and they scream at the, you know, that's the scariest thing they've heard in a long time, not getting paid. And then, then they're like, you know, this is actually for the better. After one day of work, I really need a vacation. Wow. Now that is the sound of privilege right there. And, yeah, so, you know, Chanel says, you know, now I'm never going to be a network, you know, journalist. I'm never going to be Diane Sawyer, but I could be a network doctor. Just, yeah. And, yeah, so they have to find a cure. And, you know, the and, and uh, Brock is like, what are you doing here? Oh, you know, I was thinking, but I realized the Chanel's are really stupid. Yeah, same. And the you know they talk about the cure, and his hand gets really close to her and like, you know, like touching her throat is like you know so yeah they're basically they're doing that thing. I forget which horse. I guess there's more than one, but there's there's a yeah there's a horror story about a hand transplant where the hand gets on a life of its own, a mind of its own, you know, and and starts doing violent stuff. So yeah. I, Really love to see that being, you know, uh, homaged here. And, yeah, the, you know, they note, oh, you know, the problem is what she's eating. She's getting too much testosterone, which is leading to a lot of, of hair growth. She needs to, to, you know, stop doing that so she'll lose the hair. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not the right person to say if they have the details quite right but there is certainly some you know um trans men you know assigned female at birth transitioning to to being men 
to um, you know as they always as they already identified as the the um, ah crap I'm sorry I'm, I the terminal I'm not sure my terminology is quite right I I mean no offense I swear but but you know they yeah you know the they they grow facial hair even though or in a way that certainly they they didn't before transitioning and yeah because of testosterone and yeah so the chanel's you know chanel number 1 bursts into the the sterile room and you know they they she she stops them right before like they're right about to put her under the the patient so they can do the lobotomy and Chanel number three, you know, she always covers her ears, but ear muffs are not sterile. You know, there's like there's hairs on on ear muffs, so you're not gonna, or at least the ones she wears, you can't have that in there. So she's covering her ears with with rubber gloves, just yeah. And the yeah, you know, she the the patient loses all of her hair, and you know, she's like. I, you know, yeah, she says what she thinks it looks like, and I love that Chanel number five. She's so happy as she says, "No, you look like a large baby." <laughs> Why is that good news? Why are you so happy about that? <laughs> Let's see. I mean, I guess she already maybe maybe she's just really happy that she already got the 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 image of the the hair in the drain for next time she needs to throw up. And they give her a makeover, and there's actually, I appreciate it. they didn't really bring attention to it. It's just there in the background. But you know how, like, for, you know, before doing surgery, they're going to do, you know, like, x-rays and such, you know. There's x-rays on the background, and for the one for the skull, it says wig brown. And there's another one for, like, her eyes, or something, you know, just, yeah. Let's see. And yeah, she's going to get. She's going to go take her first Tinder picture, and Chanel number one can't let her go without one last little swipe at her. Just wow. <laughs> and you know, Zayde is like, well, Chanel, I hope you learned a valuable lesson about how, you know, how giving, how how positive an experience it is for you to heal someone else. Well, Zayde, I hope you learned your lesson that today, with the power of the internet, anyone can be a, can get an MD. Let's see. And Munch is really, you know, eager. She's like, oh, we're batting a thousand with a really small sample size, but still. Let's see. And... <laughs> And, you know, Chanel number five still can't get a date. And we see, we see Cassidy ask out Chanel number three. And it's like, how is what she just said not, like, uh, complete? How does that not completely shut it down? Yeah, you know, just, yeah. But, but yeah, so, you know, Chanel number five is going to give... Uh, the 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 patient, you know, hot water, was it ther therapy kind of thing, you know, and like, you know they used to use it on crazy people, and no matter how raving you are, after an hour of this, you're gonna be super chill. And there's a lock, so she's, you know, the the patient can't get out. But you know, and and you know, Chanel number five is like, don't worry, I'm here. And then she locks herself in as well. And I'm going to go ahead and guess that he's going to be referred to as the Green Meanie. Shows up and Be My Baby plays, which I really loved ever since, you know, its use in Barbarian. And <laughs> don't kill me. Kill her. She's awful. <laughs> Let's see, and yeah, the, you know, the patient is decapitated right in front of number five, and it looks like number five might also, but maybe, maybe it was another attack of the patient. You know, certainly if she dies in the first episode of season two, that tells us it's serious. You know, she was in every episode of the first season, 
But I definitely also miss her. I think she's a really, really funny character. And yeah, this really brings, you know, this really casts suspicion on Cassidy because he was the one who knew where they were and when. Let's see. And the... Ah, uh, let's see, what's the other thing I wanted to say? Ah, uh, there was another thing. And what it was, was... Um, right, and, and, yeah, you know, in the first... The, the big thing that Kathy Munch was dealing with the first season was that she wanted to keep quiet the, the killings on campus... And now she's responsible for this um, hospital, and the one patient that they've cured is dead. You know, so that's gonna obviously be a big problem for her. I honestly don't know if hospitals also, you know, keep quiet about bad things the way that uh, certainly um, colleges do. But I could imagine uh, there's probably at least some hospitals in America that keep quiet bad things that have happened because they know that it's going to mean this, people are going to be less eager to, to become patients if the, the, so, so yeah, I think that was everything. I'm, I'm not 100% certain what, which actress it is playing. I guess it's, let's see, it's either Cecily Strong or Trilby Glover based on this, but I, I forget what they said her name was. Uh, oh, uh, it is, um, let's see, it is Cecily Strong, uh, the character Catherine Hobart. Yes, I thought she did great. Um, she, she was really, really funny and just... Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure there's been a bad cast member so far on the show at all, but, but yeah, she was really, really great. Like, it's, you know, you need, you know, for one thing, you know, after they apply all this makeup and have her hairy all over, she actually looks like this is just her normal day-to-day -day life, which, like, I've... I've done a little bit of acting. I'm really, really relieved that I've never had to be covered in, in makeup. And just, yeah. You know, it's it must be very, very difficult to to pretend. And and yeah, just 100 percent really sold it. Ah, let's see, I suppose. Right, I like that, you know, like a makeover that's obviously the kind of thing that the Chanel's excel at. I like that, you know, they are now eating, but they're still not eating much. I think they ate like one Pop-Tart each. That's their entire breakfast. And like, they're so hated now that like people will, you know, park the car right in front of them and throw stuff at them just like, wow. And, yeah, uh, I've, I've seen some people say that they didn't think season two was as good. I mean, so far, I'm really loving it. I, you know, I'll agree that it's definitely, it's it's different. I don't, I don't think it would have been that interesting for another season to be still at the, the college. Um, yeah, kind of miss uh, Grace, but the... You know, apparently, like, the actress decided college over acting, and I completely understand that. You know, acting, very temporary. If you get the right college degree, you know, you can work for the rest of your life it's based on that. So, um, right, and obviously, like, I could certainly imagine the killer, the green meanie, being... Either the woman that, um, you know, whose, whose husband died at the start, maybe the baby growing up without a father, maybe somehow the, the husband did survive and stayed hidden 
And that's how... I also wondered if maybe Catherine was the baby from the start, but I guess... Yeah, probably not. Anyway, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, one next week I'll do another episode. Tomorrow I'll do a movie. Later today I'll do X Men. So, yeah. Keep screaming, queens. <laughs>